the announcement of the Copilot computers, Microsoft also announced that their service lineup will be switching over to the ARM architecture from the previous x86 chips. If you're in the market for a Windows device, there's a bunch of new phrases and words to look for as they'll be using the market material going forward, especially so you know what's right for you. Microsoft is kind of positioning these Copilot devices as their premium, top of the line devices that exist above their older Intel and AMD devices. So maybe you don't even need a Copilot device for your needs. So these are some of the things you should look out for. So firstly, the x86 chips have been the dominant architecture for Windows and desktop applications for decades. Historically, x86 processors, especially from Intel and AMD, have outperformed ARM processors in terms of raw processing power. So naturally, the x86 was the right move. But beyond that, the x86 system is well supported. And over the years, investments were made to optimize Windows and other Microsoft software for x86. So transitioning to ARM would require a similar level of investment to ensure capable performance and stability. So why not? As time passed, the x86 architecture got better, but so did the ARM architecture. And especially in terms of performance, now that the performance is catching up to x86, you can get the efficiency of ARM chips with similar performance to the x86. For example, look at the M chips Apple uses on the iPads and MacBooks, or even the ones they use on the iPhone for that matter. They're also based on the ARM architecture. They're incredibly powerful and very efficient. So ARM chips have always been superior in terms of power efficiency when compared to x86 chips. Features like all-day battery life and some chips having 5G built into them are all advantages this has over x86 chips. But one of the first concerns you might have if you're in the market for a Windows laptop is that with this new architecture, developers must rework applications to run on these new chips. And you're right, this is true, but the other option for developers to get their apps working on these new devices is to use Microsoft Prism, which is an emulator that will allow you to use these applications and software on these new devices. And emulations aren't a new thing by any means, but the experience hasn't always been great because previous chips were kind of slow and affected some of the performance. But Microsoft is saying that thanks to these new Snapdragon chips, which we'll go over in just a bit, this shouldn't be an issue. And I just want to emphasize this a little bit more because it'll be very important if you're looking to upgrade to one of these devices. Until developers fully rework apps to work on ARM for Windows, this is what they'll have to use in order to get their software and services working. I can't speak to how well Microsoft Prism is yet because I haven't tested it myself, but I'll be testing that when I get my hands on the new Surface devices, so stay tuned for that. That being said, Microsoft is claiming that when you combine the new Prism emulator with the raw performance and improvements of these new chips, there's a two times performance boost and it's comparable to the rest of Windows. When Apple made the switch to ARM on their MacBooks, they used Rosetta 2 as their emulation platform to allow devs to port over apps for users. Microsoft is claiming that performance will be similar to Rosetta. And if that's true, people were pretty satisfied with the experience on Rosetta 2. So like I said, stay tuned for my video on the Surface Pro and let me know if you have any anything specific you want me to cover in that video. But the good news is that a lot of these major apps like Google Chrome, Photoshop, and you know major companies have already added support or started working on it. In order to really understand this new Copilot Plus branding and the requirements to qualify it as a Copilot Plus device, there's a few terms you should know. Starting with the NPU, whenever you were shopping for a computer in the past, you'd always consider the CPU and the GPU. However, now with the rise of AI, the NPU is going to be a crucial thing for you to look at as well. So CPU is the primary processing unit of a PC or a mobile device. It's used for tasks like running operating systems like Windows and running applications. A GPU is a bit more specialized and is used for rendering graphics and accelerating tasks. And now, uh, NPU is specifically designed for accelerating AI and machine learning tasks. So it's really good at stuff like image recognition, natural language processing, and recommendation systems. It's similar to GPU in the sense that it's specialized for tasks. A GPU specializes in rendering graphics, but it NPU specializes in running AI related tasks. Its capabilities are measured by a term called TOPS or trillion operations per second. The requirements for a Copilot Plus computer is a minimum of 40 TOPS and only the Snapdragon X Plus and X Elite are capable 
or are eligible for this at 45 tops, at least at the time of making this video. And along with having a minimum of 40 tops, Copilot devices must also have a minimum of 16 gigabytes of RAM and a minimum of 256 gigabytes of storage. And you might be wondering why storage capacity matters. After all, storage capacity doesn't affect the performance of a device. And you're that's right, that's true. But with the introduction of Copilot Plus computers, Microsoft also introduced a new feature called Recall, which they're making sure is available on all of their Copilot devices. And Recall will try to make helpful suggestions by tracking everything you've done on your computer. It uses AI to retrieve just about anything you've done or seen on your computer, attending meetings, opening files and web searches, everything. With Recall, you can just search something you've done in the past and it'll find it for you. And it'll need at least 25 gigabytes of storage to save screenshots of everything that it's been tracking. They're saying 25 gigabytes of storage will be about three months of tracking history roughly. And honestly, it sounds like a security nightmare and I'm sure you're all thinking the same thing, but Microsoft says that everything will be private, local and secure just on the device and not on the cloud. I don't know if it's just me, but there's no way Microsoft is just gonna turn a blind eye to getting all of your information and constant surveillance. It's just way too profitable for them to not at least be sketchy about it and do things like automatically turn it on after a Windows update. But with that being said, they also introduced a feature called live captions where you can translate from 44 languages to English in real time across any video or audio playing on your computer. So to wrap it up, after a long history of chips based on the x86 architecture, Microsoft is now heavily pushing chips with the ARM architecture. And the first Microsoft devices they announced with these new chips are the Surface Pro and Surface Pro laptop, powered by Qualcomm Snapdragon Plus and Snapdragon X Elite chips. Microsoft isn't ditching the x86 architecture, but instead they're supporting both, as I mentioned earlier. But they're encouraging developers to develop their services on this new ARM architecture. And of course, the new Copilot computers are positioned as their most premium devices. And I'll be reviewing the Surface Pro when I get my hands on it. So stay tuned if you wanna see that. If you have any questions, anything you want to see uh, me cover for those new devices or need clarification on anything I said in this video, then leave a comment below. But yeah, that's all for me. I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace.